Novena to St. Joseph the Worker Day 7 St. Joseph, the Patron of Workers In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Joseph, you devoted your time at Nazareth to the work of a carpenter. It was the will of God that you and your foster son should spend your days together in manual labor. What a beautiful example you set for the working classes. It was especially for the poor, who composed the greater part of mankind, that Jesus came upon earth. For in the synagogue at Nazareth, he read the words of Isaiah and referred them to himself. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. It was God's will that you should be accompanied with work common to poor people, that in this way Jesus himself might ennoble it by inheriting it from you, his foster father, and by freely embracing it. Thus our Lord teaches us that for the humbler class of workmen he has in store his richest graces, provided they live content in the place God's providence has assigned them, and remain poor in spirit, for he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The kind of work to which you devoted your time in the workshop of Nazareth offered you many occasions of practicing humility. You were privileged to see each day the example of humility which Jesus practiced, a virtue most pleasing to him. He chose for his earthly surroundings not the courts of princes nor the halls of the learned, but a little workshop of Nazareth. Here you shared for many years the humble and hidden toiling of the God-man. What a touching example for the worker of today. While your hands were occupied with manual work, your mind was turned to God in prayer. From the Divine Master who worked along with you, you learned to work in the presence of God in the spirit of prayer. For as he worked, he adored his Father and recommended the welfare of the world to him. Jesus also instructed you in the wonderful truths of grace and virtue, for you were in close contact with him who said of himself, I am the way and the truth and the life. As you were working at your trade, you were reminded of the greatness and majesty of God who as a most wise architect formed this vast universe with wonderful skill and limitless power. The light of divine faith that filled your mind did not grow dim when you saw Jesus working as a carpenter. You firmly believed that the saintly youth working beside you was truly God's own son. Saint Joseph, I thank God for the privilege, for your privilege of being able to work side by side with Jesus in the carpenter shop of Nazareth. As a token of your own gratitude to God, obtain for me the grace to respect to the dignity of labor and ever to be content with the position in life, however lowly, in which it may please divine providence to place me. Teach me to work for God and with God in the spirit of humility and prayer, as you did, so that I may offer my toil in union with the sacrifice of Jesus in the Mass as a reparation for my sins and gain rich merit for heaven. St. Joseph, I, your unworthy child, greet you. You are the faithful protector and intercessor of all who love and venerate you. You know that I have special confidence in you, and that after Jesus and Mary I place all my hope of salvation in you, for you are especially powerful with God and will never abandon your faithful servants. Therefore I humbly invoke you and commend myself with all who are dear to me and all that belong to me to your intercession. I beg of you, by your love for Jesus and Mary, not to abandon me during life, and to assist me at the hour of my death. Glorious St. Joseph, spouse of the Immaculate Virgin, obtain for me a pure, humble, charitable mind, and perfect resignation to the divine will. Be my guide, my father, and my model through life, that I may merit to die as you did in the arms of Jesus and Mary. Loving St. Joseph, Faithful follower of Jesus Christ, I raise my heart to you to implore your powerful intercession in obtaining from the divine heart of Jesus all the graces necessary for my spiritual and temporal welfare, particularly the grace of a happy death and the special grace I now implore.
guardian of the word incarnate, I feel confident that your prayers in my behalf will be graciously heard before the throne of God. Amen. Remember, most pure spouse of Mary, ever virgin, my loving protector, St. Joseph, that no one ever had recourse to your protection or asked for your aid without obtaining relief. Confiding, therefore, in your goodness, I come before you and humbly implore you, despise not my petitions, foster father of the Redeemer, but graciously receive them. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.